G'day guys, Manny from Extreme Auto Care and Camping with you again today. Now this is a common one, like common like you would not believe. People upgrading their caravans and they've got a, a cruiser or a, or a tow rig set up to tow their existing van. So they've upgraded the van, brand new van, it's probably got lithium in it, DC chargers, three-way fridge, whatever. I'm going to give an example here of a very common thing that we come across and it's to do with the interface between the vehicle and the caravan. So old mate's got a 200 series Land Cruiser here, beautiful rig, and he's already got a couple of Anderson plugs on the back, seven pins set up. He's purchased a new van. Now, the wiring on that van is completely different. The interface is set up, the Anderson plug set up, the trigger wire for the three-way fridge, uh, it's got lithium batteries, it's got a DC charger in it, is completely different to what he used to tow. So what does that mean? Even though you've got the two Anderson plugs in your vehicle and the, the new van might have the two Anderson plugs, it's not going to work. Now, I'll tell you why. Well, this is a classic example of why. So here it is. We've got a dual battery system. Now, the rear Anderson plug, so the grey Anderson plug for this one here is coming from this battery. This battery is receiving a charge from, you guessed it, a DC to DC charger. So it's a 40 amp Red Arc DC to DC charger taking care of this battery. It's doing a great job and it's working. So you're thinking to yourself, well hang on, what's the problem? Well, I'll quickly explain it and I'm gonna be as simple as I can here. The DC charger, all right, is the link between these two batteries. Starter batteries, all right? The DC charger takes that and charges this battery at a rate of up to 40 amps, right, until it's pulled backs off. This then runs to the Anderson plug at the rear of the car. Now, the other end of that Anderson plug, we'll just follow up to make it easy. All right, the other end of that Anderson plug, obviously would be the draw bar of the caravan, which is the storage yard. Now, the draw bar, Anderson, goes to another DC charger, and that, runs to the lithium batteries. So, what's the problem? Well, I'll tell you what the problem is. You can't have a DC charger that's charging a battery that's running an Anderson plug that's charging another DC charger that's charging a battery. What will happen is, it's happened in Albania, this battery is gonna go flat. And it does, and it's happening. And what's even worse is the voltage on this, right, flies down so fast because it can't keep up with the new lithium battery DC charger that it just shuts off. So that DC charger some eight meters away is shutting down as well. You can't do it and that's why we're having problems. Each DC charger, right, must be on its own run. It's so vital. So the remedy for this charging system is to have a direct line, MIDI fused from the starter battery, nothing to do with this system, nothing, nothing. It cannot, it can't be tapped into, it cannot run from it. That DC charger line, right, which is in the caravan, must run from directly from these batteries. So I'm going to install a MIDI fused 6BS circuit all the way to a Gray Anderson at the rear of this vehicle, direct, right? Because the DC charger is an isolator, simple. It's going to receive as much energy as it can, some eight meters away. It's going to turn on, it's going to shut down and do its job. That's the charging system fixed. Done. Now the next one is the other Anderson plug. This is for his three-way fridge. So same problem with this one. The other Anderson plug that's on the back of this is connected directly to this battery. So there are two Anderson plugs directly connected to this battery. So here's the problem. It's a direct circuit too, it's a, it's a solid line. I've got a DC charger charging this battery. This battery is running to a rear Anderson. The other Anderson on the draw bar of the van is directly going to the automatic AES three-way fridge, the automatic fridge. Now. See the problem, that fridge is going to draw some 23, 25 amps, some 8 metres away from this battery. So what does that mean? This poor Red Arc DC charge is going to be in bulk mode its whole time, which the older models only have a couple of hours bulk. This is going to be going flat out trying to keep this full. The voltage on this is going to fall so low because you're pulling so much current out of it from this three-way fridge, it'll never receive a full charge. And this is apparent in this setup, it's exactly what's happening. So once again, you need to pull the Anderson plug off of this auxiliary battery that's running a three-way fridge. You need to go off of the starter batteries. Now here's where it gets interesting, and I have to inspect the caravan to find out. At the back of all three-way automatic fridges, there's a little trigger wire, right, labeled D plus, D for Derek plus symbol, all right? It is the 12 volt 
trigger wire for the three-way fridge's high current element at 12 volt. What does that mean? That means that when that wire, that little D plus wire receives a 12 volt signal from the vehicle, it tells the fridge to start pulling 12 volt power from its high current source, which in most cases is an Anderson plug. Don't even get me started with 12 bits. There are two ways that caravan manufacturers do this. Number one, the most common, they will loop this D plus wire into that Anderson feed. So what does that mean? That means that whoever is doing the Anderson plug on your vehicle, the Anderson line must be isolated. Turn on with ignition, turn off with ignition. That way your three-way fridge will shut down, 15 minutes later, tick, 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 the little timer will go off and your fridge will ignite on gas. All right, that's the legal standard for a three-way automatic fridge. Then when you start your engine back up again, it'll go back to battery, happy days, cold fridge. The second way they do it is they physically run the D plus Y in through the wall cavity and to your seven pin or 12 pin trailer plug. So that would mean you can have a direct line in your vehicle now for the Anderson line for that fridge, but you must have an ignition controlled relay on pin 12 or pin two, whatever pin associated with that AES trigger wire, the D plus Y is associated with, that pin on the vehicle must now go to an isolated line. Now this case, his pin two is direct, all right? I've done all the tests. His Anderson lines are direct, they're wrong. His pin two is a direct line as well. So that would mean when old mate's free camping and he starts traveling and he pulls over somewhere to free camp for the night and he stays hitch up, his fridge isn't turning off. His fridge is still pulling power from these starter batteries. What does that mean? Flat battery. And no one wants a flat starter battery. So having the correct wiring done on the vehicle to suit the van is so crucial and it's so common that people are upgrading vans just like i said before that they're encountering this problem buying adapters and it gets them by old mate now on this has to keep pulling the anderson plug on his fridge line which will wear it out every time he pulls over or he has to physically go in his van and shut the fridge down what a pest camping's supposed to be easy and when you've got the system wired up correctly you will not have any issues, guaranteed guys. So, you know, I'm flat out with this, always doing it, happy to do it, because I do it right, you know. You, when you understand the systems properly and you can interface vehicle to caravan correctly, you can travel this country, start, stop, start, stop, and you will never get a flat starter battery from the, car, uh, from the caravan's drawer. Everything is isolated, everything shuts off and just works as it should. So I'm gonna set these guys up properly, spend a few hours here and set you up.